You're watching the Fox 8 10 o'clock news with Neil McNeil, Katie Nordeen, and Max Weather Chief Meteorologist Van Denton. Thanks for being with us tonight. After meeting tonight's newsmaker, you will never look at your home inkjet printer the same way again. He is using that technology to solve a health care crisis, the lack of organs and tissue available for transplants and implants. Now, you've probably heard of Dr. Anthony Atala. He's the director of the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. For the last nearly 15 years, he's led a team of researchers trying to make transplantation obsolete. And just within the last few months, there's been a major breakthrough. Inside this building that sits prominently on the south end of the Wake Forest Innovation Quarter in downtown Winston-Salem, a building healthy joggers run past every day, work's happening that'll one day benefit people who can't move as well. Our organs and tissues are regenerating all the time. The problem arises when you have an injury, and that's when the body can stop its regeneration capacity. So regenerative medicine is like, how can we get your body back to regenerating itself? Why does it stop? I mean, because I remember you told me a salamander can essentially regrow. It's, why can't our organs or, or, or extremities do that? When we get injured, uh, the first response of the body is to close itself off from the surrounding area and to protect the body from infection. And today, the more than 400 scientists at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine are experts at bypassing the body's defensive response. They're creating new tissues and organs with the patient's own cells, meaning there are no rejection issues. When I visited Dr. Anthony Atala back in 2008, he was already the world's leading authority on tissue regeneration. Back then, his team was taking tissue cells from a patient's body, mixing them together, and placing the mixture on a mold or scaffold. This was an actual bladder growing on a biodegradable scaffold and the technicians seeding it with cells. All of this could have gone back inside a patient's body to replace a damaged organ. We've implanted, uh, you know, urethras, we implanted sure. uh, bladders. Yeah. Uh, in the past, we also implanted cartilage. The team was even placing different cells in Hewlett Packard print cartridges and using a retrofitted inkjet printer to create three dimensional structures. But you know, the structures that we were creating with these desktop printers, even though they were, uh, they, they had cells, they did not have the structural integrity necessary for us to implant it surgically. In other words, they weren't strong enough. They were not strong enough. So during the last eight years, Dr. Atala and his team have developed something that's revolutionized the entire process. Uh, oh, beautiful. Wow, it's in small quarters. Meet the Integrative Tissue and Organ Printing System, or ITOP for short. It's the world's first printer that can fabricate human tissue and mold it into shape. The cells go down through the printer as a liquid, but the moment they leave the nozzle, they're actually modified externally so that as it drops into the surface, it already has a shape to it that retains its structure. The printer is also capable of printing microchannels that act much like blood vessels and allowing the tissue to get the nutrients it needs. The technology also allows engineers to use CT or MRI images like this one to measure precisely the size of tissue needed. Notice the part of this skull's jawbone is missing. Feed those dimensions into ITOP and it prints out the missing part. This is actually part of a jawbone being printed here. In addition to bone like this, the system's also been able to print muscles and cartilage like this ear. After some of the tissue structures were implanted in animals, they became functional, even developing a system of nerves and blood vessels. The next step, getting Food and Drug Administration approval for human trials. And one of the promises of regenerative medicine is not just that you can manage disease, but at some point, and in some instances, you can even cure it. Dr. Atala's goal here is to one day print the more complex solid organs like hearts, kidneys, and lungs. In fact, he foresees a day when a soldier is injured in the battlefield, for instance, or a patient arrives at an emergency room needing a replacement organ or other body part. CT scans and MRI images along with the patient's own cells are immediately sent to a tissue production or printing facility and doctors will then be able to replace the organ or other part with fabricated tissue 
in a matter of hours. For more information on the great work going on in the Institute, visit its website by taking the link you'll find on this story at myfox8.com.